Let me tell you something you might not know about Elisha and the bears. Are there really Baylor bears in Israel? Is it Elisha or Elisha? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but bears will maul your face off. This is our last session, guys. It has been our motive to tell you Bible stories that you may have learned as a kid in Sunday school to help you learn a little bit more about the story. Now, when it comes to Elisha and the bears, Elisha. when I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Israel, listening to an Israeli say his name is Elisha, which makes it infinitely easier when you're talking about Elijah and what we would normally say Elisha, uh -huh. just to say Elijah and Elisha. Right. Let's get into the story of Elisha and the bears. God's prophet, Elijah, was instructed to take on a successor named Elisha. The plan was for Elijah to anoint Elisha to be a prophet after God would take Elijah to heaven. Elijah asked Elisha, what shall I do for you before I'm taken from you? Elisha replied, please, please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. As they were talking, chariots of fire and horses came between them, and Elijah went up into heaven by way of a whirlwind. As Elisha was making his way to Bethel, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head. Elisha then cursed them in the name of the Lord, and two female bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. The moral of the story, pay honor to your elders and your church leaders, or you too might suffer a similar fate. That's exactly what I was taught as a kid. Now, the first thing I, I think we need to clear up here is that Elisha was not a man who couldn't take a joke. It's not that he was sensitive to his male pattern baldness, so he calls some bears out of the woods to eat kids for making fun of him. That's not the case. In fact, this group may not have been kids at all. What? The Hebrew words that make up what is translated in our English as little boys or kids or children is a compound word that means young priests. So the idea is, is that these were probably young men in their 20s and they were probably priests because they are in Bethel. Now Bethel was one of two places in Israel where idol worship was led by Jewish people when the Civil War hit. They went north and they worshipped a golden calf. Shark bait. Ooh -ha -ha. Enough of the shark bait. Shark bait. Ooh. And so here in Bethel, these people are priests. They're coming against God's prophet and against God himself. And also, just to show that Elisha is not a guy who just can't take a joke, he calls a curse on them, but it's in the name of the Lord, which means that he is calling down on them those that are not in covenant with God. The book of Leviticus says when there are people that turn against God and against God's prophet, that he would call the animals of the land to come against them. And so he's really just calling on what God has said in the covenant promise. You know what this means, right? What's that? Bears are holy animals. Just bear with me, please. So these guys are basically just razzing Elisha because they're obviously not followers of God. And so they don't believe that Elijah got taken up in a whirlwind as the story has been told. The phrase that they use is go up baldy. The go up portion is just making fun of Elisha's story and saying that Elijah went up into a whirlwind. And he said, they're saying like, why don't you just go up to the baldy part could mean that he had some baldness to him, or it could have meant that he was without his headship. He, he lost his leader, Elijah. In that time, for an apprentice to be without their master was a disgraceful thing. And so they were basically just saying, go up, you leaderless person. May not necessarily mean you're bald, ha ha ha. Right. But it could still. We're just trying to give a little more context to what the realm of possibilities are. I've never been to Israel, but I don't think there are bears there now, but there used to be. The Bible talks about there being bears. You know, David killed a bear and they were known as the Syrian brown bear. Look at the bears, look at the bears, look at the bears. Sheesh. They're not in Israel anymore, but they are in parts of Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and that area. Although they are very, very rare because their habitat is being destroyed and there's just not very many of them. You know guys, I, I told you at the beginning, I was always taught that you be respectful to elders and church leaders or else something horrible would happen to you. <laughs> oh, um, wait, not this one, sorry, not that one. But I don't think that is the moral of this story. What you see in, in this story is a group of godless people coming against a godly man and God protected him and I think that's a better moral to this story
because otherwise it just seems a little confusing when we read it. I hope you guys have enjoyed being with us on Flannel Board Fridays. It has been a joy of ours to make these, but just thank you for joining us for these sessions.